Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, creator of Approval Tests. In today's episode, we're going to talk about approving the intermediate steps in an approval. Now, normally you can only do one approval per class, and but there are many situations where you kind of need sort of a history to be approved. We're going to talk about techniques to do that. If you haven't already seen the episodes on how to approve just simple objects, I suggest you check that out first because it will give a lot more context to what we're doing now. You can click the link below. Before we go to the code, let's go to the whiteboard and sketch out the scenario that we're going to test. Today we're going to look at binary trees. And normally what would happen is if you made a binary tree and you put one in it, you do that. If you added five, it would add it underneath because it's greater than. If you then added four, it would add the four here. If you then added 2, you get the 2 here. If you added 3, you get the 3 here. And you get this sort of long chain. But in my case, I'm going to want it to optimize so it keeps the number of branches as low as possible. So here, it's going to put in the 1, and then it's going to put in the 5. But when I add the 4, I want it to re-optimize. So I get the 4 splitting the difference. When I add the 2, I would expect it to continue because there's no nice way to optimize this. But when I add the 3, you can see that working out to just 3 branches. So let's go to our code now and see how we're going to do this. First, I have an in-unit test all set up here. And in my test, I normally have the do and the verify. So let's quickly bring out the do. Now, I have already created the binary T that we're going to test against. But of course, when I created this, I did it test driven. So here's your tree. It's going to be a new binary tree. Next, I was going to add one to that tree, and then five, and then four, and then two, and then three. And in the end, we could easily do an approvals.verify of the tree. But if I do this, while I can see that the final tree ends up optimized, I cannot see how it progresses through the steps, which is what I want to do. So first, I'm going to go and talk about what the temptation is, which is it'd be nice to go and say, hey, I want to put a verify here. You can't do this with approvals unless you go into the name of factory. With the name of factory, you can add additional information. So this could be step one, and this could be step two. And we'll talk about places where it's very useful to do this, but this isn't one of them. And one of the reasons is, first of all, this is going to come up and fail on the first one. Now you can see up here that extra information's here. And hey, I got one five, and that's good. But I now need to approve this, because just like a regular assert, it's going to block my test. When I rerun it, I can get down to here. So I can see the pieces, but I never get to see the whole situation. And that's why this is not the optimal way to do this. The technique that I use in practice is to put this sort of checkpoint here, but not to do it with the name or factory and not to do it with individual approval. Instead, I'm going to set up first a string builder. And this is going to be the text that I'm going to approve in the final place. Now, because my verification is being mixed throughout, I'm going to go to the places where I want to put a checkpoint and add the information that I want. I would like this after 4, I would like this after 2, and I would like this after 3. Now when I run my test, you get the whole story. First I had 1 going to 5. Then when I added the 4, it re-optimized, so 4 is in the middle. Then when I added my 2, it stayed the same, 4 going to 5 and going down to 2, which goes to 1. Then when I added my 3, it re-optimized again, producing my final result. 
This shows me the entire path there. It also allows me to put in information that would be separate. For example, I might want to add whether or not it's re-optimizing at this place. And I can improve the whole file like that. It let's me see the entire situation and the details. And it's just done through this very simple technique of creating the string builder, adding the pieces to it that I want, and then verifying the entire result at the end. I'd like to end by highlighting Martin. Martin actually contacted me with this tweet saying that when he was using inunit, the ability to only have one approval per place was causing him trouble. We ended up pairing together for about two hours over Skype. And when we were done, we added the name refactory, which we'll talk about later, especially when we get into machine dependent testing. As always, if you have any questions, tweet it with the hash approval tests. Monitor that and we'll answer you promptly.